Hi, and welcome to Dramatic Knits. My name is Steve, also known as Dramatic Knits, and today is Sunday, March 20th, 2016. This is episode 249. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back one more week, and if you're new, hopefully you enjoyed today's show, and you'll come back in the future. So, um, Kelly is not with me today, um, so we are flying solo, which is fine. I've got plenty of things to talk about and to show you. So um, let's just jump right in this week into a week in review. Oh, I am finally on spring break. Last week seemed like the longest week of my life. Um, the kids needed a break. I needed a break. My coworkers needed a break. We all needed a break. So um, I have the next week off, which is nice. Not doing anything fancy. I have coworkers going to Texas and Florida and all over the place. I'm going to get blood drawn, have a doctor's visit, get the dogs groomed, you know, things that I don't want to have to take work off to do. So that's my fun spring break, but I'll be doing a lot for the business and hopefully getting a lot of crafting done this week too. So it'll be nice not to have to wake up with an alarm for a week. Though Ernest, one of our dogs, who's a Yorkie, has been waking me up the last two days about 6.30, he's like, I'm ready to go and come out and go to the bathroom. So, he's my my natural alarm clock. Anyway, um, so it was a very long week. Got through it, though. Um, did not go to knit night on Tuesday, but I did go out to open knitting at the local yarn store, which for me is Le Mouton Rouge Knittery in Bloomington, Illinois. I went there yesterday, um, partially for business. She is now carrying Leading Men Fiber Arts, um, which I'll talk about more towards the end of the show. Um, but so I went to drop off an order and I sat and I met for a while and chatted it up with some of the ladies and um, it was a good time. Uh, Saturdays tend to be better for me than trying to go a half hour the opposite direction of work um, from my house uh, on Tuesday nights. So that was good. And... Um, Nothing really exciting. It's just been a lot of dyeing yarn and watching podcasts, which isn't bad. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much been my week. Let's get into knitting. What's taking about? I have a finished object. That's right, y'all. I finished something for once. So I finished the London Mitts by Thea Coleman. Knit out of another crafty girl, Marina Worsted, in the glowing red eyes colorway on size 6 US, which is 4 millimeter. And I did these for the Thea Coleman Knit Along for the Super Summer Knit Together, which is a retreat hosted by the Knit Girls, which is another great video podcast, um, in Nashville, Tennessee in July. And they have a bunch of wonderful teachers coming this summer, and so they're doing a knit along with each of the teachers. And I've this was the second knit along. The first one was with Romy Hill, and I did the Miss Wiss shawl pattern for that. And then I did these for the second knit along. So I did nice long thumbs, just the little nubbins sticking out there. I did a little bit longer than um, requested or put in the pattern. They are nice long cuffs, so they go up into your jacket if you so please. You can see the pooling and flashing, which I love, and the slightly lacy cabled section on the side of the hands. The nice thing about this is they are knit exactly the same, so there's no reversing directions um, because it's directly on the side of the hand. So. Um, I really enjoyed it. I used about three quarters of a skein of worsted, so nice, nice mitt to have on hand. Um, you know, if you like to have gift patterns, I would highly recommend this. Um, you can see it works with variegateds. Um, you could do it with semi-solids or tonals, so it'd be a great pattern to have on hand. So that's done, and I posted a cheesy picture of myself uh, for the knit along. And got that done. So, on to the next knit along next month, which I'll talk about in rehearsal. So, really, really enjoyed this. I haven't even blocked these. I don't know if I will. I don't know if they really need them. So, really enjoyed working with Sarah, who's um, Ponky, another crafty girl, is her company. Um, known her for several years now. Really enjoyed working with her yarn. So, that's that. I have a finished object. I'm trying to dwindle down the works in progress, even though I'm planning for a couple more. Just because my crafting time is so limited anymore, and I feel bad, guys, I really do, that I used to have a lot more, and uh, a lot more finished projects, progress on things. 
Um, and honestly, ever since opening the business, that takes a lot of my time. Now, I can get a little bit of crafting done in between here and there, but you know, it's not nearly where it used to be. And um, but I have to be okay with that. Um, I'm still going to podcast. It's not like I'm going to go anywhere. Um, I still enjoy doing it. It's not. This is not. Uh, Podcasting in itself is not uh, something that I view negatively, so I really enjoy still sitting down and talking with you guys every week, so I'm still going to do that. It just may not be as much progress as I used to be able to do, and you've probably noticed that over the past, you know, especially two and a half years since we opened the business, but um, I do want to apologize for that, that I don't get to show you as much stuff, but I am who I am. We're all different, and we all knit one stitch at a time, right? Or do other crafts as well, which you've seen I've been bitten by the cross-stitching bug recently. So, um, but that'll come later in the show. So what's performing this week? What am I working on? Let, first, let me take a sip of my coffee out of my ZK 2014 mug. This is another retreat hosted by the Stockinette Zombies, another great video podcast um, hosted in Rochester, Minnesota in June. I've been there twice, and I will be back there again this year vending as well. So I've got some, I think it's wild blueberry, wild mountain blueberry coffee with some chocolate something something creamer. So, you know, it goes real well together, but still delicious to me. I felt like having something warm, and I needed some coffee. I've been, been rather tired this weekend, uh, oddly enough. I'm like, ooh, it's vacation, and all I am is tired, so... All right, what's performing? The first thing I'd like to show you is Midnight Ocean by Louise Zass Bangham. I'm using Twisted Fiber Art Large Aerial Evolution as the base um, in the Gypsy colorway on size 6 US, which is 4 millimeter. Let me pull my crafting card a little bit closer. And this is in one of my large... Um, Silver Shed USA bags, which we do carry medium and extra large in our shop as well, um, with fabrics that are only available through our shop. But she does sell on Etsy, and she does great work. That would be Anne, who is um, Amy of the Stockinette Zombies. It's her mom. So here's where I'm at. So I'm doing the recommended extensions or additions through Twisted Fiber Arts. When I saw this at YarnCon last year, uh, my leading man and I, Andy, he picked out the colorway and the pattern. We saw it as a shop sample. And they have recommendations on how to enlarge the pattern to use up all the yarn. Because, as you can see, there's a beautiful um, progression of colors gradient going on. And so you want to try to use up all that you can. So um, I've started repeating this section down here. I'm in the second repeat. I've got to, uh, it only calls for one. I'm in the second repeat. I've got to do one more. And then I go into the next section. So you can see, oh, look at that lighting today. Beautiful. So I really enjoy this. It's very, um, it's a soothing knit. Um, you have to count, but it almost becomes like a lullaby, like a chant in your head. And it always changes by one stitch every row. So with the pattern repeat. So I'm enjoying that. The second thing I'm working on is the periwinkle, periwinkle boomerang out of Broco Boboli Lace in color 4393, which is periwinkle, on size 6 US 4 millimeters. And again, I only work on this when I go to open knitting at like my local yarn store and things like that. So this is housed in my Fat Squirrel Fibers bag. I believe this is a large. I don't know if she does medium. I don't really know her sizes. Anyway, I picked this up at uh, the Knitting Pipeline Retreat this year. This commemorative tag on it. And so, since I did go to open knitting yesterday... I dropped a tag. Let's hope the dogs don't find it. Um, I did get a little bit of work done on this. So you can see I moved the dicky-doo and I got a couple more rows added. Enjoying this. Got a lot of compliments um, from the ladies at Knit Night. So... There's that. It's going right along. I don't have much. I only have a decent amount, but not. I mean, the ball's getting a little bit smaller. So I go until I'm almost run out, and then I bind off. Love having a good boomerang on the needles. Let's see if I can grab the tag. Don't mind my bald head. I know. 
Looking exceptionally bald today. You could have seen your reflection in that, maybe. Anyway, uh, next up are my Reckless Love Socks. These are ones that I work on a lot, especially when I'm reskaining. I can get the reskainer going, and in the time it takes to reskain a skein, I can usually get half a row or a round done. So um, I'm using Online Super Sock uh, Merino Color in number 1506. And I'm using size 2 US 2.75 millimeters since this is more of a sport weight. Here's the skein thus far. And I did finish the first one, so I have a hoe. I have a half finished object. So here's the first one. I made it nice and long since it's a 150 gram skein. I have plenty of yarn. Um, so I made a nice long cuff. And you can see the heel here. And then. This is where I was last week, so I finished out the foot and did my typical rounded toe. I did actually, since I did a slip stitch heel and gusset, I did actually put it on and fit it and made it long enough so that it's not stretched. You know, it has a little bit of negative ease, but it's not, um, I've been doing really, really tight socks lately, and I think I need to adjust that. So I put them on and went until it hit, you know, the knuckle on my big toe and then did the rounded toe. So um, again, this was what I thought was striping yarn, and it is in essence, but it is very random. You can see here the progression. So I've never knit with yarn like that. I've got several balls. I think I bought six different skeins of this um, through Little Knits a long time ago. Well, not a long time ago, but a year or two ago. Um, so the first one's done, and I did cast on for the second one. And I've got the ribbing done in about six rounds into the stockinette. I only did ten rounds of two by two ribbing on this. So there's that. That's how that's going. So I just work on this a little bit at a time. And they get done. Always have some sort of socks on the needles. All right, the last thing I'm going to show you today, um, because I forgot, no, I, well, I'm not gonna grab it. I did work on my granny square blanket, my DK worsted weight version, um, because we did spend a night up here watching TV in the bedroom. So I did work on that and I added a new color in, but it's over there and I forgot to grab it. So maybe I'll show it to you next week. It's not much different. Um, the last thing I am gonna show you though is Banner Day by Megan Williams. I'm using a skein of Leading Men Fiber Arts Showstopper in the Metamorphosis colorway on size 5 US, which is 3.75 millimeters. And, um, oh, I forgot to show you. This is um, Silverside USA medium size. This is what my socks live in. And this was um, a fabric that we carried in the shop that Amber graciously gifted to me for my birthday, I think because um, I love the vintage neckties. I love wearing ties to work when I wear button downs. I usually always have a tie with my button down. I've got to buy like a new tie with the new button down and make it into a whole outfit. It's crazy, I know. So anyway, this one's living in another Fat Squirrel Fibers bag that I picked up at SSK last year. So I don't usually talk about my bags too much. I usually used to never use bags, but since I've got my crafting cart from Ikea next to me all the time, I try to keep things in bags so I know where things are. So um, here is Banner Day. Again, you can see the orange dicky-doo where I was last week. I did work on this, uh, I believe, twice this week, and once was just this morning when I was watching 90% knitting. Um, so that's that, and I'm enjoying it. I mean, it's become very intuitive, and again, a great pattern with the skip stitch here in the lace panels and then the garter to break up a highly variegated skein of yarn. So if you have a fingering weight skein of yarn, you're like, I loved the colors, but I don't know what it's going to look like. You're going to want to consider this pattern. This again kind of has that boomerang shape. It's very triangular though. It's not so much swoopy as a boomerang, but because of the way it's knit on the bias, when you do get pooling and flashing, like you can see a little bit of purples here and here, because the stitch count constantly changes every row, it's going to break up relatively quickly. It's not going to hold that pooling and flashing like, say, my year in review cowl that I finished um, earlier this year. So um, this type of shape shawl um, on the bias is great for variegated yarns. And then, you know, you break it up with a little, some different stitch patterns or some um, lace and things like that. 
It's great for those highly variegated yarns that you just couldn't live without and picked up and then had no idea what you were going to do with them. So that's all my works in progress this week. Um, I, I did de decent enough progress, but it just feels weird when I used to like touch everything, you know, work on every project I had on the needles at like maybe once in a day. And now it's maybe once in a week, you know, I just I keep adding too much to my plate and I, the cross stitching has been taking over, but I've been very diligent in my whole crafting rotation where I work on something knitted. I do a little bit of spinning. I work on a little cross stitching for a podcast. I do a little bit of spinning again. Um, so I try to work everything in evenly and give everything a little bit of love. All right. In rehearsal, I actually do have two items that I'm planning to cast on in the beginning of April. Both are for knit-alongs, and I don't know why I'm saying okay to them, but one is for SSK, for the Super Summer Knit Together. So I've done all the knit-alongs thus far. I'd like to continue that trend. Um, I've never been this involved with the knit-alongs in any of the past years, and this will be my fourth SSK um, that I will be attending. I attended the first one um, just on my lonesome, not with the business. I hadn't opened the business yet. And then I didn't attend the second one because, you know, I didn't have the business and didn't have the the funds to go. Um, but then once we open the business, we've been bending now the past, this will be our third year in a row that we've been bending and we've been lucky enough to get in. So um like to be involved with those knit-alongs. Um, but then also my local yarn store, Le Mouton Rouge Knittery, announced yesterday that they have several knit-alongs going on. But the one that most people are getting excited for and were buying yarn for yesterday, including myself, I know, um, is for Iona, Iona, A-Y-O-N-A. -A. No, I'm sorry. That's not it. The one that is going on at my local yarn store, I'm sorry, I got the notes flipped, is for Quaker Lines by Susan Ashcroft. And let me show you a picture of that. Um, I loved the long color repeats in this shawl. And they recommend several different types of yarn to achieve that effect. So you can see it's got kind of a decrease going on in the center. Um, again, that lovely boomerang shape that Susan does very well. She was the first boomerang I knit besides Hitchhiker um, that I actually knew it was called a boomerang. I did like a slip stitch color work boomerang, which turned out gorgeous and I loved it. Um, but I gave it to a coworker of mine. Um, but you can see here the arrow kind of going with the decreases. Um, so my local yarn store carries uh, at least one of the color or yarns recommended. So um, I might have picked up yarn for that, but I'm going to show you that in stash enhancement. So I'm excited for that knit along. They're casting on on April 2nd at the open stitching on Saturday. I will be at yarn con, so I probably will not cast on for that until when I get home at some point. But I'm excited about that. I'm going to be making the largest size. I was going to make the smaller one, but then I'm like, go big or go home, right? I, everyone seems to enjoy a larger shawl. So whereas I might not keep this for myself, I hardly ever do. But, you know, it's going to have a lot more wearability for people if it's larger. So depending on who I give it to. So the second thing I'm going to cast on in April is for the... Um, next knit along with SSK and the next featured designer that they're going to have in teaching classes is Mercedes Tarasovich. I believe is how you say her last name. Um, she's known mostly, I believe, for brioche and color work, so I may actually take her class at SSK even though I really want to take Romy Hill. But then I also really enjoyed Thea Coleman. I don't know, I may be taking extra classes at SSK this year. I've never taken more than the one that comes with your registration. Um, I did want to take a Susan B. Anderson class last year, but hers filled up so quickly I couldn't get in. So um, so anyway, I'm planning on knitting. Is that a Y or a V? Now I can't read what I put on there. So let me pull up the other tab. It's Ayano. Ayano. A-Y. I can't even type. I typed it wrong. A-Y-A-N-O. Ayano. And it's a two-color shawl with some garter stitch and lace, and it looks like an applied edging, lace applied edging. So there's that. And I picked this out, and again, you get um, extra door prize tickets for knitting along. 
Um, but you also get extra door prize tickets if you knit with a vendor's yarn. So um, I've been really good about that. The first knit along I did use my yarn, but the second were the mitts that I showed off at the beginning of the show, and that was from another crafty girl who's also going to be vending. And then for this, I've picked out two skeins, one from another crafty girl again, and one from Two Guys Yarn Company that I actually picked up at, I think I picked up both of these maybe at SSK last year. I can't remember, but I know the Two Guys Yarn Company I did. So, um, the skein of Another Crafty Girl is her Ooh Shiny Sock in the Rock Eater colorway. And I actually think I picked this up at Knitting Pipeline last year, I think. Or the year before. I can't remember. So, this is her Ooh Shiny Sock in the Rock Eater colorway. And there's that. And it's got some subtle hints of a light green, almost blue. So, I'm going to do this for more of the um, simple laced sections. Um, and then... In Two Guys Yarn Company, I'm using their Bachelor Collection um, in their 70% Superwash Merino, 30% Silk in the Dutch Island colorway. That looks like that. So I thought these complemented each other pretty well. And they're both going to be vendors at um, SSK as well. So if I hold up the iPad again, let's see if I can do this. So my plan, I think, right now was to, where the pink is, is to use the Rock Eater, and then the gray is going to be the blue. Now, these both do have merino silk, different percentages, but I did also realize that the um, Another Crafty Girl is plied, whereas the Two Guys Yarn Company is single plied. Eh, I don't really care. I'm a rule breaker, aren't I? So there's that, and it's got some um, other wonderful pictures some different um, options here so you can see like that so I don't think the another crafty girl is um, too variegated so yeah anyway I'm gonna be knitting that starting in April as well so all right, uh, in, no, behind the scenes, my spinning. What am I working on? I'm currently spinning a commission spin for my friend Carla, and I'm doing the Fiber Nymph Dye Works VFL uh, in the Candy Mountain Gradient. It was three colors. It was a light pink, and then kind of a reddy pink, and then lastly a purple. And I'm in the last part. I'm in the purple. I just started it today going into the purple. Spinning it super thin because I'm going to Navajo or chain ply it, which is a three ply. And so I would like to get the best yardage possible. So I've even had it kind of, I'm, I'm notorious for not really having it break on me, like having singles break when I'm spinning them. But I'm spinning it so thin that I'm actually, a couple of times it's gotten away from me. So um, that's unusual for me. So hopefully there won't be any issues Navajo plying it, but hopefully I'll get some good yardage. So that's what I'm working on. I don't know what I'll be spinning next, but hopefully I'll have some finished yarn to show you um, next weekend. That'd be lovely because I will see Carla at YarnCon the following weekend. So, All right, in the scene shop, my cross-stitching segment. Uh, segment. Um, I'm still working on the Artiste Mini and the Owl. And um, let me show you again what that's supposed to look like. I got a good amount of progress done on this. I didn't think I was going to get as much done as I did, but um, it's getting there and it's almost done. So maybe I might be done with this by next week. But here's what it originally is going, or the original pattern. Okay. So there's that. And even though I'm stitching it in the wrong direction, here's where I've gotten thus far. So. This week I added his feet, the part of the branches going on down here, which will swirl around between these, this gold and the lighter brown that I need to add. I added some of the green leaves down here, which was really interesting because you look like, oh, you have all this room to stitch, but there's actually PVC back there, so it was interesting trying to stitch back in there with the PVC. So um, I can't really move the fabric around because it is such a small size that it pretty much fits this. Um, I'll need to put it on the hoop again, I think, to do some of the upper leaves up here. 
probably wouldn't have been as big of an issue if I had st stitched it right the right way on the fabric. But then um, I also added in the green and the black up in his uh, above his eyes, and the white in his eyes was added this week as well. So not a fast stitcher by any means, but it's coming along. I'm really excited about it. So I like that, and um, yeah. So and this is on um, 14 count Ada, which is normal with kits. And then this is a needle minder from Genus Unique Boutique on Etsy. So still enjoying the floss tube videos, still enjoying specifically, I'm still catching up on past episodes of the Stash Queen on YouTube. So if you want to be enabled, if you enjoyed cross stitch and you want to see a ton of different projects, um, I'd highly recommend the Stash Queen on YouTube. Alrighty, in the spotlight, what am I watching and reading? Um, the only TV show that I watched was we did start the first episode of season four of House of Cards. So that's what we did watch that one night up here. Other than that, I'm still behind on all my TV shows. I'm pretty much waiting until Andy goes to work this week and I'm going to camp downstairs for a little while and try to catch up on all my shows. So um, that's the only TV that I watched. We did not watch a movie. I did finish two books this week. One actually read at work, and the other one I finished listening to here while I spin. Um, the one I, the audiobook I finished listening to was Blood Destiny by Tessa Dawn. Um, this is the first in a series I think I picked up through an Audible sale. I will not be continuing the series. Um, I think I gave it about two or three stars on um, Goodreads. I don't think the story was developed enough, and I think that if you're a fan of vampire genre, uh, it assumes you kind of know the basic plotline of any vampire genre, and it makes a lot of jumps and did not build the character relationships as well as I could that I thought it should have been built. Um, so... You know, if you can get it cheap, maybe, but um, I'm glad I got it on sale. That's all I can say. So, um, but it was all right. I mean, I spent a lot of time listening to it because I listened to it while I spun, and it takes me a while to get through those books. So, the other book I finished um, was at school. I finished Typical American by Gish Jen. It is supposed to be um, comedic, but basically, it's about um, a man who comes over from China to America to get his doctorate and the challenges that he finds there. He then soon runs into his sister and um, her friend who have also come over to escape communists and um, they never end up going back, um, you know, and lose ties with their family, but um, they end up kind of becoming uh, a family because he ends up marrying the friend because that's kind of seen as what they should do traditionally. So what's interesting is when the novel starts off, it's a lot of broken English because he doesn't know a whole lot. And, um, you know, holding true to typical Chinese ways. And then um, as the, you know, and they talk about, oh, you know, these decisions made in America, it's so typically, you know, that's a typical American, you know, and they think, higher of themselves in their traditional beliefs, you know, rather than what they witness in America. So as the novel goes on, you can see a lot more of this, these typical American ways infiltrating their ways and um, them becoming accustomed to the American lifestyle and um, them eventually grabbing on and finding the American dream and, and materialism and things of that nature, and then how that can um, essentially set you up like a house of cards, not to be punny, but, you know, when things can chip away at that house of cards and things can tumble pretty fast. So I know it doesn't sound funny. Um, I didn't find a whole lot of comedy in it. Uh, it wasn't like slapstick comedy, but um, it was an interesting take, and I had selected that novel for my kids because our whole theme in sophomore year and 
my curriculum is culture and doing, you know, finding out what your culture is and then doing cultural analysis and cultural conflict when two cultures come into contact with each other. So I had a feeling that that was going to be a very good novel for my kids. Now, a lot of them are not reading it because they have about six different options they can choose from. There's not many who are reading that novel, but I did think it was a really good correlation um, with what we're studying. So um, I would agree that if you're interested in kind of uh, cultural study and, and the changing perceptions of cultures when they are immersed in a new culture, um, I would highly recommend Typical American by Gish Jen. So I think I gave that about three stars. It didn't blow me out of the water, but I did think it was um, decently well written. So and then um, I'm reading and listening to some other things, but I'll tell you more about those as I finish them. So, All right, some stash enhancements. So as I told you earlier in uh, not in rehearsal. Oh, yeah, in rehearsal. Uh, in what I'm going to cast on, I told you that my local yarn store is doing it along for Quaker Lines by Susan Ashcroft. And one of the yarns recommended is Liberty Will Light, um, which is put out by Classic Elite Yarns, and she had a whole table full of it. I've never worked with Liberty Wool, so that was part of the reason why I um, picked up some yarn, even though I told myself I don't need to pick up some yarn. But I was like, I really like the aesthetic of this shawl in the longer color, color runs. So I might as well pick up the yarn that it calls for, and that will do that. If I'm going to knit along and I really want to enjoy the finished object. So, by the way, this is Ernest. He is a hot mess. They are both going in to get groomed on Tuesday. They, I mean, you can't even see his eyes. And he's kind of whimpering. I know. You're so ashamed. You don't want to show yourself because you're so much a hot mess. You need to be brushed out today, too, bud. Anyway, he wanted to come up and say hi. So, um, what did I pick up? Oh, bending. I picked up three balls of Liberty Wool Light in uh, color 6699, which was, ooh, I can't remember, something cloudy. I'll have to look it up here in a second. It's not on the ball band. So you can see here it's got some um, tans and browns and grays and then this soft purple. I picked up three skeins. You can see more of the brown and gold in, in there. And this will make the large size. Um, the colorway name is... Now I really want to know. <laughs> so I'm excited to knit on this. I'd uh, uh, like to see how it comes out. And you know me, I like that shape. I like knitting those types of patterns. So um, we'll see how long it uh, takes me to get through. Do, do, do. I thought I put it in here already. Oh, there it is. I'm like, where's the one with no picture? I've, I put it in my stash, but I have not taken a picture of it. It is in the color Cloudy Dawn. So, Cloudy Dawn. So there's, there's that. That's my stash enhancement for this week. I know I don't need more yarn. I don't. But there's a couple of people who are going to knit uh, along with our soliloquy base at the shop. So that's exciting. All right, so a round of applause. I put a call out a couple weeks ago saying that we were getting low in our prize pool and that we only had one more prize left for knit alongs and things of that nature. And that if anybody was interested, um, you know, we're always accepting donations of yarns, project bags, you know, uh, people donating patterns, you know. Um, and also, you know, just making donations to the podcast in order to help with postage, um, you know, paying for the website every year. Um, I'd like to update to a new camera um, eventually, but, you know, it is what it is. And, and things of that nature. So um, not to mention, you know, the bags to ship in and the printing of shipping labels and all that stuff. So a couple people reached out and blew me out of the water with their generosity. So... I did want to give a shout out to those people. I've asked for permission. They were totally cool. So um, I just wanted to say thank you to Diane. She's local to me. She's offered up to do pattern prizes for our next knit along, which when Callie returns, um, she will talk more about, which we'll pick up in April. 
Um, so thank you, Diane, so much for that donation. And then Amber um, had offered <laughs> and just blew me out of the water with a whole box of different, I mean, and it's a deep box too, a whole box filled with different types of Knit Picks yarn. So that's going to keep us stocked for a good long while. So thank you so much, Amber. Um, greatly appreciate it. And then Carolyn sent a big old bag of different types of yarn in here. So um, she did say Callie and I could pick one out. I have my eye on one, but I don't know if I need to enhance my stash anymore. So um, we'll see if Callie picks up anything. But there's a whole array of different yarns in here. Super exciting for that. So thank you so much, Carolyn. I surely do appreciate it. And I know whoever wins the yarns will be very, very appreciative as well. The last person I want to thank is Christina. Christina made a donation to the podcast. And thank you so much. That has helped greatly, especially with the shipping out of the last prizes for the February um, Red and Pink Knit Along, as well as the February Race to the Finished Object Contest. So um, if you are ever interested and feel like doing so, um, I don't plan on ever really um, doing Patreon or anything like that. Um, while that works for some podcasts, um, I don't know if that's the route that we would like to take. But if you're ever interested in making a donation to the podcast, if you like what you see and want to donate, um, if you go to our website, which is DramaticKnits.com, off in the right-hand side, you will see a little Donate Now button. And it's that simple. It'll do everything through PayPal. And um, if you can't, I totally understand. But if you are so inclined, I just wanted to remind people that it is there. So thank you to you four ladies. You make this podcast an even better show than it is with Callie and myself. It's because of viewers like you that we are able to kind of give back and continue and grow and do more knit-alongs and fun things like that. So, and thank you to everyone who joins in and joins our Ravelry group and, you know, has conversations in the threads and join the knit-alongs and start their own threads and discussions. That audiobook thread is still going strong. So we have a discussion over in our knit-along group, right? Or our Ravelry group right now, uh, talking about making book recommendations uh, for audiobooks, whether it be through Audible or your local library. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for a conversation there, come on over. Um, if you have still have not joined our Ravelry group, you can find it by searching Dramatic Knits, one word, with no space, and then you should find the Dramatic Knits video podcast group. So um, come on and join us over there if you haven't done so. I do want to remind you that um, anything you finish in the month of March, you can still enter into the March Race to the Finished Object Contest. We have two wonderful prizes. The first prize is um, some Knit Picks yarn in um, beautiful blue. I can't remember the name of the brand or colorway, but I showed that off a week or two ago. And then we do have a pattern prize from our featured designer, who is Megan Sanders. So thank you, Megan, for being featured. Um, and donating patterns to our podcast. All right, um, I am going to go into center stage, which is all things leading men fiber arts. If you leave me now, bye. I'll see you next week. But if not, I'm not going to take too much of your time. So um, first things first, I did want to tell you that, as I mentioned earlier, Leading Men Fiber Arts has added a new retail location, which is Les Moutin Rouge Knittery in Bloomington, Illinois. Um, she currently is only stocking our soliloquy base, but she will be expanding upon that very soon, I hope, and I believe she will be. So, um, it seemed to be well received at, um, Open Knitting yesterday. Um, a lot of people planning on, again, using it for that Quaker line shawl that I was telling you about. Up, excuse me, upcoming shows, <laughs> upcoming shows, uh, in April, April 2nd and 3rd, we will be vending at YarnCon in Chicago, Illinois at the Plumbers Union Hall. Come out and see us. We are been finagling and planning out the beginning of our official show season, which is YarnCon. I know we've done Knitting Pipeline, but this is kind of our big, big opening for the show season. Um, we have grand ideas for how the booth is going to look. We'll be incorporating some kits. We're going to have roll legs there, gradients, sock blanks. 11 different bases of yarn, tons of fiber. Um, it's just, we're really excited to um, be showcasing 
our company and our brand um, and to keep growing and keep bringing you guys new things and um, we're, we're really excited. So um, if you can be there, come on out. It is free admission this year, which is awesome. They've become a non-for-profit organization. Um, if you look at, if you go to the YarnCon website, you can actually purchase some swag, t-shirts, bags, things of that nature. Um, you can also purchase door price tickets when you get there and make donations if you're so inclined to do so. So they have a lot of wonderful uh, vendors there, a lot of indie vendors and whatnot. So Definitely check them out. Two weeks after that, in mid-April, we will be at the Fiber event in Greencastle, Indiana. That is Friday the... Oh, I don't know. 15th? And Saturday the 16th? Maybe. Um, let me look that up real quick. Because now I'm interested. Yep, Friday the 15th and Saturday the 16th. Um, so we will be there. Don't have booth numbers or placements for either one of those locations yet, um, but we're super excited. We've heard great things about the Fiber event in Greencastle. I know that Joanna of Knitspin Farm is also vending, so I look forward to seeing her, and hopefully I'll see some um, other local faces that I know in the area in Indiana. So come out and visit us there. Um, we then have two events in May, which I'll tell you about as we get closer to May. One in Iowa and one um, up in northern Illinois. So that's exciting. All right, let me show you what's been updated to the shop. I will tell you that uh, we will have an April colorway of the month. I'm super excited for it. Um, it's a little bit different than what we've been doing for the colorways of the month. A little more subdued, but yet beautiful. Um, and I will show you that next week. Um, because because we're not closing the shop while we're at YarnCon, um, we will still have the shop open, so pre-orders will still be available while we're at YarnCon. So, all right, let me show you what's been updated this week in the shop. I did a couple updates this morning. First of all, on Showcase, we have Darkest Hour. That's that's truer. It's a semi-solid black. On Soliloquy, which is 100% Superwash BFL, we have London Fog. On Showstopper, we have Royalty. On sp our Spotlight Base, we have Apocalypse, which is always a huge seller in person. People seem to love that aqua and red together. On callback, we have, this is sport weight, we have Envy. On show stealer, which is an MCN fingering weight, we have complete imagination with a little, not so much of the pink. This particular skein did not have so much of the fuchsia pink in it, underlying in it. So if you're looking for something a little more masculine, this has got the blues and greens and browns, but not so much the pink on this one. And then last but not least, speaking of pink, on Showcase we have a skein of Prom Queen, and it is not that eye searing. It's pretty bright, but it's not like glow-in-the-dark bright, so that's Prom Queen. So just a couple skeins, uh, keeps the shop going and something new, so I'll be adding more things this week here and there. So keep an eye out on the shop. You can always find it at leadingmenfiberarts.bigcartel.com. If you'd like to stay in the know of what I'm updating, I usually do one or two things a day. You should, the best place to follow us um, besides checking out the shop is Instagram, where you can find us as Leading Men Fiber Arts, or to um, join our Facebook group for Leading Men Fiber Arts. I also do update to the Leading Men Fiber Arts Ravelry group. So. I've been thinking, I've uh, had my uh, gears going in my head about another knit along for the Leading Men Fiber Arts group um, to kind of maybe get some knit alongs going and get some activity going in the group over there. So um, there's a plethora of places you can follow us. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for this week. So thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope you have enjoyed the show. You can always find me as Dramatic Knits on Ravelry, and you can find the show notes at DramaticKnits.com. So until next week, I hope you knit something dramatic.